In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create tenants in Cisco ACI. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to go deep into the concepts of creating tenants because that's going to be a long list of items. But I'm going to give you some idea of what a tenant is and why we need to create tenants and what type of tenants we can have in Cisco ACI. So basically what we have is going to be our fabric and our fabric is combined of spines and uh, leaves and because all of them is going to look like a very giant switch that's going to be represented by this rectangle here so i just name it fabric but you know that inside fabric i have spines i have leaves and they have connections to each other and i have multiple links all of those links can be connected to the leaves and leaves are going to be the entry point and exit points of the traffic from different tenants and I'm going to decide what type of tenants is going to be here. Now let's start with this. If I have a customer, the customer is going to connect to me using one or more links. And that one or more links can be connected to one or different leaves. A customer is not going to be aware of what is happening inside my fabric. But customer is going to be an entity. And different entities can be represented here. Now, my customer can be a server, which has some virtual machines on that. Let's say, for example, uh, you know, B-series, for example, a UCS server with lots of virtual machines on that or multiple even virtual machines on multiple servers. So this can be called a bare metal, you know, connection to us my customer can be connected using a switch for example let's say switch one which is connected to multiple switches maybe or those multiple switches are connected to different you know computers or virtual machines on different servers so what i have here let's say this is switch two and this is switch three so what I have here is an L2 network. So I just call this an L2 out or L2 network. Or my customer can be something like a routed network. So let's say this is router one. It is connected to another router. Let's say router two or router three. And then these are connected to each other and to different parts that may be I have something like the internet connection here. So this is going to be called an L3 out. And basically, these are the three types of tenants that we can have here. How can I configure this and how can I create, uh, you know, the EPGs here? EPGs are going to be the endpoint groups. And for each one of them, EPGs are going to be a different concept. So let's say that, uh, let me choose another color for creating the APGs. AP, EPGs, as a matter of fact, or endpoint groups on a bare metal server that contains a physical server or virtual machines is going to be a bunch of uh, machines, let's say virtual machines, which are connected to a virtual port. If this is a VMware, that's going to be uh, connected to a specific port of a virtual distributed switch or a virtual switch. And then these ports are going to be part of an EPG. So if I have some port, let's say the virtual port like this, that's going to be, let's say, for example, EPG1. This is going to be EPG2. So this is connected to EPG1. This is connected to EPG1. This virtual machine and this virtual machine are connected to EPG2. So these are going to be different endpoint groups. So the grouping is going to be this. Virtual machine 1 and 2 are connected to virtual port 1. And virtual port 1 is understood by the fabric, by the APIC, that's going to put them in one EPG. Let's say 3 and 4 and 5. 3 and 5 are in EPG 2. And based on the role that they have, we can just connect them to virtual ports. And they say that, for example, this is something like an application server. This one is like a web server. This one is like a remote desktop server or stuff like that. So based on the role, they can be connected to different ports on a virtual switch or virtual distributed switch. And that's going to be an EPG. 
for an L2 out network, EPGs are going to be different. I'm going to say this is a switch network that has VLAN, let's say 10, 20, 30, 40. These are the VLAN that I have. Each VLAN is going to have some servers or some clients or some, let's say, whatever, endpoints connected to them. And each one of these VLANs are going to be a separate EPG. So let's say I have 10 servers in VLAN 40. That's going to be uh, 10 servers in EPG. Let's say I'm going to name it EPG 40 based on the VLAN name. And again, this is a um, you know, decision based on the role of the server that you have. Let's say, for example, VLAN 40 is going to be the VLAN that I put my file servers in them. Uh, and it's VLAN 30 is going to be the you know VLAN that I have my web servers in it. So that is going to be the so VLANs are going to be different EPGs. What about an L3 out? Something like this network. Let's say this is going to be a different subnet. This is a different subnet, different subnet. So let's say that my L3 is based on 10, 100, 1, 0, slash 24. This is what I have as my uh, overall subnet. Uh, or let's say not this one. 0, 0, let's say. So 0, 0. This is a subnet that I'm going to have. But based on that, I'm going to say this is 10, 100, 1, 0, slash 24, 2, 0, slash 24, and 3, 0, slash 24. So what I have here is going to be different subnets. And again, based on the role of the devices that I have, I'm going to put them in different subnets. And I would say each subnet is going to be a separate EPG. So one more time, virtual port on bare metal or on a VMware, for example, network, a virtualized network, let's say, each port is going to be different EPG. In L2 out, each VLAN is going to be a different EPG. In L3 out, each subnet is going to be a different EPG. So let's create a very simple tenant, and then I'm going to do this in different videos so that you can see how I configure the EPGs and how I create the contracts to make sure that those EPGs can connect to each other. Also, you should know that I can have multiple connections to Fabric and I can even create, you know, kind of a conversation between different tenants or between different, you know, branches of a tenant. So how can I create a tenant? Let's log in to APIC. So I'm going to log into APIC and then let's say that I'm going to close this one. There is a tab here, the tenants tab. By default, there are three tenants. Common tenant is going to be something like global routing table. Anything that you create here is going to be available to all tenants. So basically something like internet connection. If your data center, you know, provides that, that's going to be in here in this tenant. Infra tenant is going to be whatever happens inside the fabric all the ports between spines and leaves and everything that happens inside those spines and leaves they are going to be in infra tenant also i have the management tenant which is going to be the ports that are connecting to management network that's going to be a different vr for itself each one of them can have multiple vrfs so for example you can see that management has two vrfs common has two vrfs also infra has two vrfs I'm going to create a new tenant. To create a new tenant, I'm going to click on this Add Tenants button here. And let's say that my tenant is going to be something like Alpha. That's the name of the company which I want to have as a tenant. And when I say company, I do not really mean that. You can have even different parts of your internal network as tenants. But let's say that these are my customers and I want to create tenants for them. Then one interesting thing, and I'm not going to go through details again, is uh, each one of those tenants can have their own VLANs, they can have their own subnets, and none of them is going to overlap the other ones. Why? Because inside Fabric, where I just 
transit their traffic, what is happening is each one of them is going to have different bridge domain. And a bridge domain is going to have an identifier which we call it a VNI or virtual network identifier, VNI, VNID, whatever name that you just give it. So let's go back to here. I just created a tenant in the name of Alpha and I'm just going to go and click on Submit. So this is the tenant that I have just created and you can see that an extra tab is created for that. If I just click on a Start, Quick Start, there are some links here that you can use them. Uh, for example, you can create EPGs from here, VRF from here, bridge domain, contract, and if you want to have, um, let's say, L3 out or L2 out, you can just create it from here. But I prefer to go here and, and click on this. And let's say that this tenant is going to be, let me go to my tenants. Let's say go to all tenants and I'm going to double click on alpha. That's going to open this and you can see that there are some extra folders under alpha open and two of the most important ones are going to be one networking and second application profile. So right now I'm not going to create an application profile because I'm not going to create any application workflow inside my network but what I'm going to have is the network. So if I just open this, you can see that I have different options. But one that is very important is going to be VRFs. Whatever you want to create, VRFs are going to be the first one to create. So if I just click on that, you can see that there is no VRF created for me. I can right click on this to create a VRF or I can just go and click on this tools button here and click on create VRF. Both of them are going to open the same wizard for me, which is create VRF wizard. So I'm going to give it a name. So let's say, for example, I'm going to say this is VRF1. And of course, you should give it a better descriptive name than what I have done here. But I'm just showing you what you need to do. And inside this VRF, there are some stuff that are very important. One of them is going to be this one. The, let me, this one, which says policy control enforcement reference. And you can see that this is enforced. It says that if I have some devices inside this endpoint group and some other devices inside this endpoint group, basically these two cannot talk to each other. If you want them to be able to talk to each other, what you need to have is a contract between these two. And if you do not create a contract, they are going to be isolated for themselves. Inside each bridge domain, of course, devices can talk to each other. But between, uh, not bridge, I mean, sorry, uh, inside each EPG. Uh, but between EPG, or let's say inter-EPG communication is not going to be allowed. Unless you choose unenforced. What I do is, when I just create the VRF, when I am deploying uh, this, in the beginning I just, uh, you know, chose to have unenforced. So that without creating the contracts I can have communication between different EPGs and later I just come and and change it to enforce because then I need to create the uh, contracts and, and just make sure that based on those contracts which contain some filters of course I am able to regulate the type of communication between these uh, different EPGs. One reason for this is in the beginning I am concerned about the connectivity but in the end I am concerned with the type of connectivity and uh, the you know ability to be able to connect to uh, each other using some regulations so let's just start with unenforced for now and I'm going to click on next then it is going to ask for a bridge domain and again a bridge domain we can have multiple bridge domain a bridge domain is kind of let's say a VLAN, but a VLAN inside fabric, not a VLAN inside your network. Your customer network is going to have its own VLANs, but all of the traffic from customer is going to be encapsulated uh, using this VLAN. Let's say it is kind of a VLAN inside a VLAN or a tunneled VLAN or something like that. You can just think of it as a new encapsulation. And again, you can have multiple of them, but 
let's say I'm going to create just one and I'm going to say this is called BD1 and again you should give it a better a descriptive name and right now I'm not concerned with any of these uh, policies I'm going to click on finish now that the BRF is created you can just go to bridge domain you can see that the bridge domain is created as well and you can see some information about the bridge domain. If I just click on this folder bridge domain, you can see that it says uh, VRF is created for me. This is a segment, of course. And uh, this is a multicast address which is going to be used for bump traffic, uh, the custom MAC address, of course, and an unknown uh, unicast policy, which is a hardware proxy. This means that uh, the hardware proxy table is going to be used for bump traffic unknown unicast traffic our flooding is true but you can just uh, disable it unicast flooding is true and that is what you have created so inside bridge domain of course again there are some information that you can change it for vrf you can see the segment ids here and this is how you create the tenant itself but what about epgs i'm going to speak about this in a separate video for you so for now, this is how you create a tenant and the most important parts of these tenants, which is going to be networking.